Daddy, you really made a mess. Hello, and welcome to episode 13 of the All Wheel Drive Mustang Project. In the last episode, I covered finalizing the power tunnel and getting the transmission set into its final position. And that has allowed me to move on to the next major task, which is finding a solution for the rear drive shaft. It didn't quite go as planned, but ultimately turned out pretty nice. Let's take a look. So my original plan to get a drive shaft that actually has a CV joint on both sides, you know, the stock S550 rear differential has a CV joint flange. And I purposely got a transfer case that has a CV joint flange too. And I was going to get a double CV joint drive shaft, kind of like the 2013-14 GT500s and the 20 uh, whatever 2021 22 whatever newer GT 500s um, but it turns out they're actually quite difficult to get um, nobody seems to be able to make them and if they can make them they can't balance them the one exception is a certain drive shaft place in uh, the Carolinas but they were quite expensive and um, wanted you know 10 to 12 weeks to make it and I'm still want to get this thing on the road so I had to make up a backup plan and so what I got was this and so this is a GT500 drive shaft or a Ford Motorsports aftermarket made by Dana Spicer uh, GT500 drive shaft for a 07 uh, through 12 and um, this is aluminum three and a half and it comes with a flange you know it's a u-joint setup obviously not CV joints but it comes with a sh with a flange here that bolts directly to the diff. Uh, it's the same flange on the older S197s and the S550s, uh, at least the early ones. And this fits. I've already tried it. And then it has this kind of this flat yoke, um, not really a yoke, I guess, flange on the transmission side. And so it, it was it was quite a bit too long. So I already had it shortened. It, it took almost 11 inches out of it. You can see where they cut it and re-welded it and rebalanced it here. And we'll see how this goes. Now, this will become much, you know, the angles of everything will become much touchier using U-joints versus CV joints. Um, I'll have to make sure that the angle of the transmission matches the angle of the differential. Uh, currently, it, it does. And so it should work out. We'll see. It's pretty short. It's pretty light. So hopefully it don't get any vibrations. But this required an adapter to go from, you know, this flange here uh, to the CV joint, you know, flange here. This is a 108 millimeter CV joint. And so I whipped one up in CAD and first 3D printed it so I could get this all in the car and measure for length. That's why I can, it's already cut and rebalanced. I also wanted then to incorporate a crank trigger, um, well, I shouldn't say a crank trigger, a trigger wheel for a VSS. So in all of my modifications here on the transmission I lost the vehicle speed sensor, right? That would normally be on the tail housing of a TR6060 and while well, I'm using the VET tail housing in this transfer case doesn't have any provisions for a, for a vehicle speed sensor. So I whipped that up too and that bolts and 3D printed a mock-up and that bolts to the back uh, back here and then I'm going to use a stock um, you know VSS from, a, from, from the car you know from the 2017 Mustang so I 3D printed this mocked the whole thing up and then made this and I will insert some shots of this being made but it basically this is obviously an aluminum adapter that I whipped up on the mill um, and that also then accepts this um, trigger wheel, which I had a laser cut at Send Cut Send, my first time using those guys. And so that bolts to the back here with four screws, um, but it also is the right, uh, the ID is the right ID, so it's a really tight fit to the OD of this flange to keep everything concentric. And so and then you can see here, I'll insert some footage of this being made, but as part of the, this is still pretty rough, but the shifter base, I put a little aluminum wing on in here, and this is incorporating the stock um, 
2017 vehicle speed sensor. I'll have to extend the wires, but that should, and this is 36 teeth, the same as a stock, once again, MT82 2017 Mustang. So shouldn't confuse the computer too bad. Obviously, I'll still need to tune long term because the gear ratios are different, but this should get me close. It actually turns out I got some bad information off the internet. Uh, there is a shock, right? And later on, when I went to go change the tune in the uh, computer, I realized that the stock uh, VSS sensor, actually in, in the modern Ford lingo, it's no longer called a VSS or a vehicle speed sensor because the car uses the ABS for speed. It's called the OSS or output uh, speed sensor. Um, but I keep on calling it VSS anyways, but the stock uh, MT82 OSS is actually 34 pulses, not 36. I had found some data suggest it was 36. So I made my trigger wheel 36 pulses, but which did cause a little bit of a problem when I went to go fire it up uh, after this, but I changed the number in the tune to 36 and it seemed to completely fix the problem. So no big crisis, uh, but uh, anyways, I thought that was just kind of humorous uh, that I, I basically put the wrong number of uh, teeth on the trigger wheel. So after figuring out the basic plan and abandoning the double CB joint drive shaft, um, I first you know 3D printed the adapter and then put it underneath the car and measured uh, for a drive shaft length and then had it shortened. Um, kind of a, some extra information on the drive shaft. You may wonder, you know, why did I start out with the GT500 drive shaft? Why didn't you just get one totally custom made? Well, for some reason, that exact part number, the one for the 07 through 12 GT500, was on some kind of special at uh, CJ Pony Parts, whatever, and it was only like 560 bucks or something like that. And my local drive shaft shop couldn't even get the parts to make one for that kind of price. And so I just looked again and now they're like 770 bucks or a lot more money, which is what everybody else was charging. So I got some kind of really good deal on it. So between buying it for under five, under $600, excuse me, and then paying my local shop 160 bucks to shorten it, um, it actually ended up being pretty economical to, to do it that way. And it has the nice quality Dana aluminum slip joint and everything on it. And so it turned out pretty nice, you know. So anyway, so once I had my plan of attack, got the drive shaft, I 3D printed the adapter, put it underneath the car, and started mocking everything up. And uh, so I'll go into that a little bit here. So here's the 3D printed adapter I'm using for mock-up until um, I machine the aluminum one with the, once again, I, the trigger wheel here. I'm going to make a bracket from probably bolting it onto this original uh, transmission mount surface here to go up and detect these teeth to replace the VSS because there's no VSS in my setup anymore. Kind of an interesting angle. You can also see the shifter uh, above the transfer case and how it fits through the hole uh, quite nicely, but that's just a little aside there. So the drive shaft is mocked up to the 3D printed adapter here. Um, and it fits pretty well. Um, I just put a couple bolts in the back, but you see this, you know, this Dana drive shaft, you know, the back end fits directly into the pinion of the differential, no adapter needed. Um, the front is meant to go to a, a early GT500, so it just has a flange, and that's why the adapter is needed. But as already mentioned, the adapter will also incorporate the trigger wheel and everything clears pretty good um, looks good and you know so but the only slight problem maybe is this uh, rubber cover here for the slip joint gets it's, it's, you really can't see it but it gets really close on top here obviously you know, at the transfer case being so far back this would normally be like 10 inches farther forward where the tunnel is taller and bigger and uh, and it would probably be a little lower too so it's a little close um, not enough to panic but I think I might take this heat shield off and clearance it so I've marked it here 
to kind of get a reference of where that is. But it's it's not in a situation where I'm going to drastically change my plans. Otherwise, I'm pretty excited about this whole thing and how it's fitting. After mocking up the drive shaft with the 3D printed part, I went ahead and started hogging out some aluminum on the mill to make the actual aluminum adapter. First doing the OD and now I'm doing the pilot and uh, the mill made pretty quick uh, work of it. As always, I first modeled it in Fusion 360 and then used that to post-process to my milling machine. So this is the problem with a non-enclosed mill. Ships everywhere. But it's a pretty perfect mill for my application. Doing the final uh, finish cut on both the OD here uh, to final dimension and then on the on the pilot diameter and basically uh, you, you use 2D roughing to get the thing close and then you do a final pass to get it to dimension uh, to get more accuracy. Then the counter bores for the uh, six screws that hold it to the flange and now I'm adding some flats to uh, help hold it in the vise. Here's the uh, drive shaft adapter halfway done, you know, one, one half of the part done. This wasn't in my original plan, but I added these two flats so I could, uh, when I flip it over, um, I can put it, basically set it on parallels on those two flats and not have to worry about making custom jaws to grab the outside. You know, the part's still symmetric, it should still be balanced. Is a pretty easy addition to make it much easier to machine the other side. Anyways, everything turned out. Got the uh, holes tapped for the actual drive shaft, and these are countersunk screws that bolted to the back of the transfer case. I put the hole through the middle, so when I flip it over, I can dial indicate on this bore, the ID bore, to get my zero. Because obviously, when you flip it over, if you didn't have that hole, it'd be difficult to impossible to get your zero back. So that's just a simple trick to uh, keep everything registered but uh, making good progress moving on to the other side here's the completed back side with the pilot that goes into the flange on the transfer case and the threaded holes that retain the trigger wheel for the VSS next I made a simple aluminum bracket for the stock 2017 VSS sensor this will basically hold it so that it can pick up the uh, trigger wheel that's on the back of the drive shaft adapter. This bolts basically to a support bracket as part of the shifter mechanism and then keeps the VSS at the right distance relative to the trigger wheel. Well that's a wrap on episode 13 of the all wheel drive Mustang project. Once again all kinds of progress. I've just been thrashing on the car lately trying to get it on the road before I run out of season here in Minnesota. And as you can see if you look behind me the car isn't on the lift so a little foreshadowing of the outcome of, the, uh, of my efforts here. So if you find these videos interesting please consider liking and subscribing and uh, once again thanks for watching.